Want to up your crafting game in 2024? Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today is my annual, this is what you need if you are a crafter video. So today I'm gonna be sharing my favorite craft tools, must haves, but also adding in some supplies this year. Normally I don't do that, but I have found that there are certain supplies that I consistently use throughout the year. And so I'm gonna go ahead and share those with you because you can pick it up once and then have it throughout the year for crafting. So let's get started. To kick this video off, I'm going to start with what's in my apocalypse bag. And you're probably thinking, what the heck are you talking about? So these are gonna be the five craft tools that if the apocalypse comes, I'm throwing them in my bag and they are coming with me. Now, before I reveal those five things, I did wanna say that down below in the description box, there is a crafter essentials guide. And what I've done is it's kind of like the travel one that I created for you guys last year. It's an interactive guide that has everything broken down into cute little pages and categories and all you have to do is click on the picture and it will take you to the link of that item so if you need to give somebody some gift ideas for yourself just kind of send them the link to this pdf guide and they can click around and shop for you so okay top five items going in my apocalypse bag now this first item is probably not going to be any surprise to you because i've been using it for years that is my detail tip glue gun now detail tip glue gun this is my absolute favorite glue gun i use this probably 95 percent of the time i like it because for the projects that i do it gives enough glue but then it also allows me to do the teeniest amount of glue without having some kind of glue blob explosion now i do use my regular one but i'm again 95 percent of the time i use this cordless detail tip so you guys know me and sure bonder i'm keeping this gun with me at all times Next up will be my miter shears. So the miter shears I've used again for several years. Use them, I use them to cut popsicle sticks, the tower blocks from Dollar Tree, dowel rods cut really great. I know Shannon has used them to cut thin molding. You can use them for so many different things. Changing the blade, don't worry. I created a video last year, I think it was, or maybe it was the year before, about how easy it is to change the blade. I will link that cute little video it's not cute, it's just informational. I don't know why I said cute. The informational video down below in the description box, it's a real easy little process to change the blade. But yes, miter shears are a must have if you work with any kind of wood while you're crafting. Going on to the next item, that's gonna be tin snips. So the tin snips, I actually use these, the large popsicle stick, sticks from uh, Walmart. While you can use your miter shears, you kind of have to score it and work it a little bit more. I often use my tin snips to cut the thicker popsicle sticks. Also, these are great for florals, trimming up those florals. So tin snips uh, definitely will cut things that the miter shears will not. Number four is going to be my crafting heat gun from Wagner. Now, I absolutely love this one uh, because it does have the stand which makes it go hand-free so that I can just swipe things across the top, which is a really nice feature. I also just like that it's very easy to hold. So this is a great little tool to use for drying paint, things like that. But remember, this is not strong enough for when you use torch paste. So you do need the honker heat gun is what I always call it, the honker heat gun. And I'll share that in a minute. But um, yeah, this one is just, it gets a lot of things done. So definitely recommend a good crafting heat gun. And the last thing that's gonna go into my apocalypse bag is going to be my hobby knife set. Now, this one has been sold out. It's actually from Arteza. It's been sold out for a really long time. So I got online, did some research to try to find one that was very comparable, that got good reviews. I will link it down below. Um, but what I like about it is it has three different housing um, sizes. One of them's missing because I don't know where I put it, <laughs> um, that you can put the different blades in. So for using the thicker blades, you've got a bigger housing, which I really like. All the different types of blades, this Arteza one happens to tell you like best uses for each of the blades, which is nice. And then it came with a cutting board. So you can pick up the little cutting boards from Dollar Tree and just kind of make that your designated hobby knife one if you want to do that. But a hobby knife is a great tool. Again, you can use this to cut dowel rods. You can use this to trim off all those extra little things. If you do a lot of Dollar Tree DIYs, I really do use my hobby knife quite a bit when I work on those. 
Before I move on, there's one more item. One more item that I would put in my apocalypse bag. It is an item that I was thinking back last year and I was thinking to myself, okay, what tool, every time I use it, was I continue to like, hey, little tool, I really like you. Like you really do your job well. And so my MVP tool from last year, if you don't get anything else, if you just say, I'm only buying one thing, this is what you need to get. I had a hard time pronouncing it. It seems like every video I never knew what to say. It's my all, y'all. <laughs> it's my pointy little all. That's right, this thing is a beast. Like it's not expensive. It can do so much. Like I, I'm blown away. So uh, yeah, this one is just, this is it. This is the tool. If you take nothing else away from this video, this is what I would recommend you getting. Um, I didn't find this exact one, but I found one with a nice little wooden handle that I linked down below for you. Um, but yeah, you need an all in your apocalypse bag because if nothing else, like if you don't craft with it, you could definitely like get the zombies away because it's pretty sharp. So MVP of last year, my all. Let's talk about some more of my favorite tools that I, again, use all the time that I highly recommend you having at some point in your arsenal. Now, the first thing is going to be a heavy duty heat gun. I mentioned if you decide to work with torch paste, which you guys know I love to work with that, you have to have the bigger heat gun because it has to hit a certain temperature. This one is a new one that I got last year and I've used it, oh geez, I don't even know, maybe seven or eight months. I absolutely love it. I love this one because number one, it's got the hands-on or hands-free feature, sorry. So I can set it down the table and just, you know, if I need to swipe something real quick or something like that, love that feature. It's also got a panel where you can set the temperature, which is really nice. But what I really like about it is, is it has an auto cool off feature. So when you're done using it, it instantly goes into the auto, the auto cool off mode and cools down your gun for you. So when you know that that cool off goes off you can put it away safely and not worry about it being hot or doing any damage to where you're storing it so definitely recommend a good heavy duty heat gun speaking of heat a mini heat press is a great item to have now mine is a Cricut one but the HTV Ront mini heat press is way more affordable and I've actually seen tons of reviews. I've talked to several people that say they really, really like it. This is just great for those tiny little iron-ons you may need to do. If you just need to hit a little piece of fabric to take out some wrinkles, it comes with a little stand. Even the HTV Ront one comes with a little stand to cool off. So this is a great little tool to have for any of those projects where you need to apply a little bit of heat. If you're going to use a heat press, you want to get yourself a nice little heat press mat. So I've got this size and then I have one that's a little bit bigger for if I use the hand one that uh, I need to press down a larger area. But this is a great little pad to protect your work surface when you are working with those presses. Last thing talking about heat is silicone mat. So you guys know that I love to work on a silicone mat. It protects my surface from paint. It's easy to clean up. Glue can drip on it. It easily cleans up again. It protects it from heat as well. I've got a regular silicone mat that I typically work on all the time. And then I also found one that has like a little paint divider. If you do a lot of painting, it's got a cup for you to put water. That's another great silicone mat that you can paint directly onto it and then just very easily wipe it. So a silicone mat is a great thing to have in your craft room. And here's an item that I have been using for several years. It's just the tabletop little power bank that you can clamp to your work surface. This is just so convenient and nice because it's all right here at your table. So if you're having to plug and unplug, you can very easily do that. I have the smaller one because I don't really need a larger amount of plugs up here, but they make them for all different counts of plugs. It's also got USB, so you can charge your phone. You can charge whatever you need to all right here on your tabletop. Now this one is a little bit of a weird one. So this is actually a nail polish bottle holder, okay? It adjusts, it has a section and sticks to your table. But what I love to use with this, use this for is paint bottles. So right now I've got some Mod Podge on here, but if you've got a paint bottle that is kind of running low, every time you set it back on the table, then you've got to score it out more. You got to wait for it to drip down. By putting it in here, you can just easily put it in here. It lets the paint go down and in the event that it happens to leak, it's just an easy cleanup. You can easily just go in there with a little bit of a wipe. It's silicone. It comes right off. So I have found that this thing is very helpful for those paint bottles that are starting to run low on paint or glue bottles as well. 
paper cutters. Now I have used this Fiskars paper cutter for years and years and years. And the reason I like this one is number one, it's really easy to change the blades, but it has, and I know you're not going to be able to see it, but when I put whatever, uh, you know, piece of paper I put in here to cut, there is a little line that runs all the way down. So I know for sure when I put it in here, it's not just like an open space where I slide it. I can see exactly where the blade is going to cut. So this Fisters one is my favorite. It does the bigger paper, which I also like. So definitely recommend a very good paper cutter when you're working with all those paper crafts. And I've even been able to cut foam with this, vinyl, different things. So paper cutter, this is the one I'd recommend. Some of you spotted this next item in a couple of my videos, and so I thought I'd go ahead and show it, and that's just this little tube turnkey. That's all it is. So this is Gorilla Glue, uh, the clear grip. This is one of the craft supplies I would highly recommend you have in your stash. If you like E6000, you know, potatoes, potatoes, that's totally fine. I just find that this actually sets up faster and is a little bit stronger in my opinion. I just really like this brand better, but I, I digress. I'm talking about the turnkey. <laughs> so the turnkey um, just kind of helps keep that glue, you know, down, makes it easy to go. So I got this, I think in a pack of four, it wasn't very expensive. So you could put it on a tube, you could put the extras on toothpaste if you want to, or any other types of tubes you have in your craft room where you just kind of need to help the product get out of the tube two more tools that I would highly recommend. One being my rotary tool. If you're not a fan of power tools or drills, this is a great alternative. These rotary tools or even a Dremel will get the job done as well because it does come with the little drill bits as well. So you could go Dremel or rotary tool, whichever. And it's just, it's easy to put the tips in there. You can drill your holes. There's like sanding attachments. There's all kinds of different attachments to it, but highly recommend this if you're just not quite on the power tool train. And of course you need to add a Versa tool. So this is the Walnut Hollow Versa tool. I use this probably the most with the knife blade attachment to cut things like plastic, things like that. But you can also wood burn. If you saw my Valentine DIY video, I did some wood burning with this tool. So this is another great tool to have. It comes with a little stand. It comes with all the different little attachments as well. And it's a pretty good price point as well. This item won't be a shock to you. My little tabletop vacuum. You know, it's just a little vacuum. Mine happens to look like a ladybug. It does a great job picking up glitter. If you work with glitter, little bits and pieces, if you sand something, it does all the things and quickly cleans off your work surface. So a tabletop vacuum is a great buy. If you like to work with florals, then you need to get yourself a glue skillet. This is so convenient because all you do is you heat up the glue in the skillet and then you take your florals and you dip in place, dip in place, dip in place. So easy. One thing about the glue skillet is they do have little pellets that you can buy to melt down. But if you like to use colored glue sticks, and that's another item that I would highly recommend you keep in your stash, colored glue sticks, and you need to change colors, you can squirt out some little pellets, save those, drop them in here, melt them down, and use that. So that's another way to use that colored glue when you're trying to switch colors. But yeah, a glue skillet or glue pot, some people call it a glue pot, is definitely a great thing to have if you like to work with florals. Now there are so many scissors. I would recommend you checking out pinking shears, a good pair of fabric scissors, a rotary cutter, all kinds of different cutting devices. But one thing that I use a lot, these are my curve blade scissors. You can see it has a curve. These are just great for when you are freehand cutting something out and you need a little curve to it. It just works so well. These again are Fiskars. Uh, I've got several other cutting recommendations. Again, it's going to be listed in that guide. I'm not talking about everything in that guide, but anything that is in the guide, I highly recommend. So curve blade scissors are a great one to add that you might not think about um, as far as your cutting apparatuses that you have, but I absolutely love these. Now this is the part of the video where I'm going to touch on some uh, items that are a little bit more pricey. These are going to be the bigger ticket items where you may need to budget for it or put it on a wish list. But I did want to share the ones that I use the most in my craft room, starting with my Cricut. I have a Cricut Maker 3. I also have the Explore 3. I absolutely love them. I typically use my Maker 3 more just because it can do uh, more stuff. It can engrave, it can cut wood. 
highly recommend that. I also love the Joy. If you are just making small stickers or just small decals, the Joy is a great one to start. It's a great price point and they have the original Joy and the Joy Extra. So you can definitely check out those Cricut machines. Another thing that I absolutely love is my auto heat press. So I do have the hand heat press and I do use that quite a bit when I'm working at my craft table, but the auto heat press is just really nice because it is just one of those, especially when I do sublimation, I can slide it in, push the button, it goes down, it goes up. HTV Ront has a fantastic auto heat press. It is a much better price point than some of the other brands and I absolutely love mine. I've been using it for years. Highly recommend if you're in the market for a heat press. Now, one new tool I got is an auto tumbler press. I actually haven't had a chance to play with it. I have a mug press that I absolutely love, but I want to start doing some more tumblers because that is just something that is an easy gift that you can do and whip out in no time. So I will report back more on the auto tumbler press in another video because I need to play with it a little bit before I can make the recommendation. But if you need a machine that can help you just have like go-to quick, easy gift ideas, a, either a mug press or a tumbler press would be a great thing to add to your stash. Printers. Two printers that I would recommend. Number one, I have a Canon crafting printer. And what that means is I actually can put 12 by 12 cardstock paper in there and print out a 12 by 12 sheet with my crafting printer. I absolutely love that. It's wireless. It does all the things. It's by Canon. Again, I'll have that linked down below. So if you like to make your own scrapbook paper, that's a great printer to maybe consider if you're looking for a new printer. The other printer is gonna be a sublimation printer. I have an Epson sublimation printer. Now here's the thing about this. You can take a current printer you have and turn it into a sublimation printer. Now you have to go through steps. Um, I personally have never tried it, so I can't really recommend you know which videos to watch or who to follow, but I know there are tons and tons of tutorials on how to turn a regular printer into a sublimation printer. But once it goes sublimation, you can't go back. So my recommendation is if sublimation is something you want to get into, I would just consider getting a designated sublimation printer that you can use. Again, I have an Epson. I absolutely love it. Sublimation is one of those things that if you like to do quick and easy kind of high end DIY gift ideas, that's another good thing to do because you can sublimate so much stuff from clothes to shoes to jewelry to, I mean, watch bands. Like there are so many sublimation blanks out there, like just tons and tons. So consider that if that's something you might want to try this year. I actually love doing sublimated projects. Okay. And the final machine I want to talk about, which is going to be the highest price point, that is going to be a laser. So last year I helped Glowforge launch one of their diode laser. There's the diode laser and the CO2 laser. So the diode laser is a laser typically that is a lower wattage and you can't quite cut everything on it. So like my diode laser, I can't do clear acrylic. I can't do white acrylic. It just has something, some blue, like it just has some limitations to it. The CO2 laser is the one that you can cut like all the things. Um, now with the diode, some of them do have attachments where you can engrave on um, tumblers, Gettys, things, you know, cups, things like that. Same with the CO2. The CO2 laser is going to be more expensive than your diode laser. Um, again, I have a Glowforge diode, but I am getting a CO2 laser because I do have some things up my sleeve that I will share at a later time that I'm super excited about. So I definitely needed a laser and I will share more about that as I learn it and kind of give you my feedback on a CO2 laser. But if you are a crafter and if you like to you know make items to donate maybe you like to donate to the local school auctions or maybe you might want to do a small side hustle where you do craft fairs you definitely could start with a diode laser and cut all kinds of things i've made gift card holders i've made ornaments i've made so many different things with mine and um there's a lot of options there so if you are wanting to start a side hustle in 2024 um a laser or might be something you might want to consider and do some more research on. Let's talk craft supplies. So this is something new. I don't typically do craft supplies and I'm also going to talk about craft blanks that are great to also have in your stash. So I already mentioned the Gorilla Clear Grip Glue. That is one of my favorite permanent glues to use and colored glue sticks 
two items that I definitely and highly recommend. The third one that I would recommend if you think you're going to want to do any type of wood burning is going to be torch paste. Love this stuff. It is just, I've used the scorch markers, I've used the torch paste, and I just find that the torch paste is just far superior when it comes to burn, ease of use, things like that. So torch paste is a great item to have. So much wood burning possibilities with this torch paste. Two more adhesives I wanted to talk about. If you like to use spray adhesive, I love the Gorilla Glue spray adhesive. It is repositionable, but it's also so sturdy. That is my most favorite spray adhesive absolutely love it. Highly recommend if you do a lot of, you know, maybe if you like to apply fabric places or, you know, do types of signs like that where you need to adhere uh, scrapbook paper even, that is a great adhesive to use. Another one that I like to use, which is what I use a lot with my laser projects when I'm putting wood pieces together, that's the Loctite Gel Glue. It's my favorite because on the sides, it kind of has a little bit of a control and you can squeeze and get just the right amount that you need. It's a super glue. I mean, you can use it for many things. You don't just have to use it for wood projects, but if you like to use super glue and you're not super happy with it, <laughs> If you like to use super glue, but you're not super happy, that should be a slogan. Um, try Loctite. Like it is my favorite fast drying and it is fast drying uh, glue to use for different types of projects. Now the next item I recommend you get in your stash, not going to be a surprise, faux sprinkles. I love faux sprinkles and they pretty much make them for anything. The faux sprinkles are typically made out of polymer clay that they slice up. They've got them for all kinds of seasons, holidays, all the different things. And yeah, I mean, you can just throw those sprinkles on so many different types of projects, put them in little jars, do what you want to do. So faux sprinkles is a good one to have. A couple more supplies that I recommend. One is one that I really started using quite frequently last year, and it's called Undo Remover, U-N-D-U Remover. It is a little bottle that basically you can squirt out um, and scrape on um, any kind of label that you might not be able to get off, like those dollars. Some of those Dollar Tree labels just don't come off with heat. And it's a great label remover. I highly recommend it. Um, uh, one of you, so my subscribers actually recommended it to me and I just started using it very frequently last year and I really, really like it. Another thing I would recommend, and this is the best soap I have found so far, it's called Scrubby Soap. And I actually found it in a small shop in Belleville, Texas on the town square. I was shopping there and it has a built-in like scrubby brush in it. It is the best brush. Not only does it exfoliate your hands, but it just gets the paint. It gets the spackling. It gets all of the things off so easily. I absolutely love this soap. It's what I have next to my sink in my craft room and what I use to clean my hands anytime I'm crafting. The next supply is something that I actually started using kind of halfway through the year last year that I found myself just constantly grabbing and that's chiffon ribbon. I absolutely love putting iron on on it, making custom bows, making, you know, little gift package things, but even for projects, they're just so soft and with spring coming up i feel like chiffon ribbon would just kind of take those projects to another level because like i said chiffon ribbon there's just something so flowy and elegant about it i don't know but i definitely have tons of chiffon ribbon in my stash now the other thing i would recommend if you don't have a cricut is to get yourself some iron on transfer paper that's where you can print out an image and then you put it on your shirt, your bag, your whatever you want to transfer it to and just use an iron or if you have a, you know, a hand heat press and press it on. That is a great option to have. Also, some of the transfer um, paper where you might print out a design and then just use the carbon transfer to transfer it. And then you can either hand paint, hand letter with markers, what have you. But yeah, those two things, if you don't have a Cricut, I would highly recommend getting those because those will help you. If you see somebody use a Cricut, you can probably get away with using one of those to make that same project. Now I wanna talk craft blanks. Now I have all of these blanks I'm about to talk about in my craft room, but I am actually currently working on a craft room organization video and it's a hot mess and I don't know where anything is. So a lot of these I'm just gonna have to show you a picture, but I'm showing you what I actually have. The first one is a set of acrylic keychains. I bought this set and I can't begin to tell you how many quick little easy projects I made using this keychains. They came with the tassels, it came with the keychain, and like it was an easy go-to gift idea that I could make for my daughter's friends, my son's friends, just by you know putting a name on there, or doing a logo, something like that with a little bit of vinyl. You could also paint these 
these as well or you know print out a label on your printer stick it on there mod podge over it seal it so you don't again you don't have to have a cricket to decorate these but keychains are a great quick little go-to gift idea and easy to diy wood rounds kind of go without you know any type of wood round is a great thing to have whether you want to make a tray or you want to make a sign so i like to buy packs of just the wooden circles on amazon i find it's great because if you need to add holes use that rotary tool use a drill just add the holes so i kind of like to get the plain wood rounds without holes just in case i don't want those holes in it other ideas of blanks having some either the canvas zipper makeup bags or canvas bags I don't know what it is about teenagers I don't know if it's everywhere if it's just like all the girls like to carry cute little canvas bags and so those are an easy thing that you can just either sublimate on you could do a print and iron on easy easy blanks to do again for gift ideas or just for yourself other items that are great coasters is a good one to have as blanks as well as ornaments ceramic ornaments you can add vinyl you can sublimate on them lots of options when it comes to ornaments as far as glasses i like to have some tumblers as well as the beer can glasses that i can just customize whip out something either for myself or for a friend's birthday or christmas anniversary whatever you want to whip it out for but those are great and then koozies are another great one that you can customize maybe you're throwing a party and you want to have a little party favor it's in a cost effective way to have something to give to your guests and the last one is going to be a pillow cover so a pillow cover is a very cost effective way to change your decor without having to have a lot of storage get yourself a good pillow fill and then get some blank pillow covers make your own covers and then just change them out with the seasons easy peasy and then all you're having to do is fold those up and store them versus having eight million pillows that you have to store somewhere in your house now i briefly wanted to touch on some cricut supplies that i recommend i'm not going to go into a great detail if you have a cricut definitely check out my little crafter essential guide because there's all kinds of suggestions and things that i have but there are three things that i did want to mention that i felt were kind of game changer that really helped me in my cricket journey last year one is the little tray that i can add to my cricket put the vinyl in you slide the blade across and it cuts the vinyl i just found that to be very helpful because you always get that straight cut so that when you go to feed it the next time you know you have a straight line and it'll feed in nice and smooth the second thing is vinyl storage now I have mine stored on a Calyx system in my craft room, but Whitney shared this little vinyl storage thing that she found and I need more storage. So I ordered some of those. They haven't come in yet, but I think those will be definitely a game changer in storing vinyl. And then the last thing, my MVP Cricut tool from last year was my fine tip weeding tool. It has a little tiny needle in it and honestly if you do designs where there's little teeny pieces it is as simple as just poke 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 and those itty bitty teeny weeny little pieces come out so easily that wraps up this year's craft tool and supply recommendations plus some bonus now i didn't talk about everything in my essentials guide there are still several things i would recommend so just check the link down below if you want to see what else i might recommend in the categories i talked about I also wanted to mention, if you did not see my message, I started a weekly newsletter. It is kind of the insider scoop to Creative on the Cheap. You get exclusive for freebies and files in there. You get sneak peeks of what's coming to the channel. La the first newsletter I launched, I did ask um, them to give me feedback on mystery box voting categories. There's a little survey for them to fill out and give me some opinions on that. So if you'd like to join my weekly newsletter, the sign up is also linked down below. I would love to have you kind of be an insider on creative on the cheap. Thank you so much for watching guys. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to tell me in the comments, what are your five apocalypse bag items that you would be taking with you? I would love to know. I hope you guys have a great day. Here are some more videos you might enjoy and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.